Today I want to talk about the ESP32 and an e-paper adapter that's built from another project from 2014 and I found this on the link you find in the description. And I only do some minimal changes to the schematic and from the schematic I built my own small PCB. In principle an e-paper display are two electrodes that can hold different charges so you can have a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other side or vice versa. And on the top you have a nearly invisible electrode and on the back side you mostly have some visible electrode. But this depends on your on the type of the display. So some displays also have a backlight with an invisible back electrode. And between the electrodes you have some capsules that have different sides and the different sides can hold different charges and also have different color. So if you put them through the electronic to the charged field then they flip around at a certain voltage level and so you can change the color of the e-paper display. But also if you don't charge the electrodes the capsules stays on their position. So this is why the e-paper display don't change the colors even if the display is disconnected from your circuit. And this is how the e-paper display looks under the microscope. You see on the back side, the back side electrodes are all, can all be individual seen as one pixel and you see the blocks of one pixel electrode. And this is where the charge is driven to. And you see the on the sides, the rows and the columns and so on. And we can also see the connector, the connector on the back side. You see the small artifacts that are etched into the glass plates or whatever material they are made of. And we can also see the front side pixels, but they are not so sharp to see. But we see the difference between the black ink and the white ink. And I can zoom out a little bit and try to not get out of focus, but that's not so not so easy with my microscope. So the whole e-paper adapter is based on this project from Jara Spare Time Electronics. And as you see, this is nearly identical to this schematic as you see. And this is even invented by Yaroslav Sikora. And please check out this website. And this is the ready-made project from Yaroslav Sikora. I hope the spelling is correct. So as you see, the adapter is a little bit bigger. So here you see my version of the schematic and this is nearly a boost converter. And we have here the MOSFET and, and the gate is driven by an logic from the e-paper display and the switches on or off the gate. So the drain and source is connected via the 3 ohm resistors to ground. If the, the inductor is energized via the 3.3 volt rail, then we can energize and de-energize the coil with the MOSFET and all the spikes of the energy goes to the negative rail via this shot key diodes and positive via this shot key diode to this pin. So we have here, I've measured this with a function generator. We have around about 30 to 40 volt on the high side and about minus 30 volts on the low side. But this is measured by the e-paper display and the paper e-paper switches on and switches off as whatever voltage is needed on the both pins.
And I've also optimized the Schottky diodes so you can either use three of the same type and you can all the more or you use the one from the original design. This depends on your bill of material. And I also use a different MOSFET as suggested by the example. But in my case, this works fine. And last but not least, I optimized all the capacitors so we can use nearly everything with one value. It's but instead of the higher values, I stack more than one on top of the other. So we can either use two one microfarad capacitors stacked on top. So we get round about two microfarads and so on. And also a slight change. I've reduced every pin that's not needed to this small eight pin adapter. So I only need eight pin to drive the whole e-paper display. So then I save the netlisk to my e-paper adapter and change to the board view. And now we're loading the netlist to the PCB new module in KiCad and place all the components where you and we just roughly place the components where we think they can fit the best. And then we rearrange it. So that is the fine tuning of the PCB board. And after all this we place the tracks and weirs and so on and then we get the ready-made module. And this is the design I came up with. This is the connector to the this e-paper display. This is the whole array of passengers. Here we have the Schottky diodes, the MOSFET and also the inductor. And this is the 8-pin adapter. So we can see this maybe a little bit clearer in the 3D view. So the inductor, the MOSFET and optionally you can use this dual short key diode or you use single ones. That's up to you. So and nothing on the backside, just some traces. And this is how to connect the e-paper adapter to your ESP32. And first we connect the ground pin and the 3.3 volt rail. Then we start with, with some kind of I2C bus pins, the serial data pin and the clock pin. Then we also need some kind of client select pin and a um, pin for the rotation of the data. So we have the data and also commands. Then we have a reset line and also a busy output if the display is busy. So here you see also a close up or a microscopic view of my solder ring, but I have to admit this is not the brilliant work that I've done. But it works and I'm happy with the result. So I've done four of prototypes and took some steps to be at the point to demonstrate the adapter to you. And in the next episode, I show you all the software you need for the e-paper adapter. And I've written some interfaces for the U8G library. So it's very easy to integrate the e-paper adapter to your already made firmware or, or what have you. And if you need some PCBs, I have an offering from PCB Ways. So you can use the coupon code written in the description. But I have not tested the PCBs from PCB Ways, so I cannot tell anything about this. And if you're not sure, just Check the other sites you know and compare the prices. So check out my GitHub page and you find all the Gerber files, the schematic and also the board view of the KiCad files. And you can use the Gerber files just to order your own PCBs if you wish. Hey, thanks for clicking my video. I wish you a nice day. Stay tuned. See you next time and bye bye.